Should Don't I laugh at me. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Bad, bad <coughs> Keith. Bad. <coughs> We're out here. You in the cold or something? Oh yeah, I, uh, yeah. Silicon Valley, the uh, Silicon Valley uh, guys. I think they sent bioterrorism my way, <laughs> trying to get Microsoft. Don't sick. tell me you're talking to Bubba or someone. Uh, no. You should. Uh, sometimes you should get Bubba. Uh, oh, Bubba, yeah. Do you know Bubba? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's cool. He's just such Unsearch. a character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's an idiot. He's a great. He's character. been on Channel Nine. He's great. He has. Oh yeah. I haven't seen. I should watch his videos. Yeah, we broke the news about the desktop search. So when they first shipped last summer. So. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah, I was down there. I was yeah. just down uh, interviewing the Hotmail team. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew Bubba when he was up here working on, uh, um, on whatever that thing was that they were doing over there. Yeah. So, anyways, who are you? <laughs> I am. Who am I? Uh, <laughs> That's I've my been favorite. I've been here before. This is my new yeah, relax in. mode, all that sort of stuff. I was going to ride my bike in today, but uh, probably would have been too loud for you. Um, uh, uh, I'm Ian McDonald. I'm uh, director of program management for Windows Server. Yeah. You've been uh, you, you've been a key player in Windows for a long time, right? You, you ran the war room for Windows 2000, if I remember right. Uh, I was project manager for Windows 2000. I was project director for XP and Windows Server 2003. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I've been around in Windows since the end of '98. I was on Exchange before that, and originally started uh, answering the phones and product support in Australia. Wow. In '91. So. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm going to I'm going to New Zealand and Australia next week to. Uh, do keynotes for TechEd down there. So I was actually going to post out on the site that, you know, um, what would a cool keynote sound but it sound like, but I never got around to it. So. A little story. Uh, you spoke at the MVP summit what three years ago? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and uh, I heard you. I was in the in the audience then. That I was when you were an MVP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Bomber was right after you, and I. Uh, um, Bomber was taking suggestions from the audience. I said, uh, "Let Ian out in public," because <laughs> uh, I loved I loved the way you spoke forthrightly about what where Microsoft was and well, we, and the development you know, like, process uh, and stuff. Microsoft is is a different place than most people perceive it to be, and and I, I'm sure from reading your blog and stuff, I'm sure that you, you've seen that. You know, yeah. it's a uh, um, there's a lot of passion. You know. We're, we're in this really interesting stage right now where um, there's probably a bit of a shadow under Microsoft for the last couple of years, and some of it was quite rightly there. You know, the security stuff and the way that the world changed around security, we had to do specific work. Uh, there were things that we didn't know about that we just had to do, and we had to make our products more secure. We had to go and uh, give some guidance to our customers on how they could make their products more secure. And really, we have to take a position in the industry that leads on that, that says, lift your game. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're three years into a 10-year job, I believe, for security. Um, uh, and, you know, so we're not complete at all. There's not going to I don't there's a, think there's a point where we can say that we're going to have 100% secure stuff coming out, but we can go and, you know, do a lot of things. We get over that, get over that sort of harm, a number of other things, you know, both the economy or other things that are going on in the world um, uh, mean that, you know, it's kind of wasn't the most uptime. But we're at the end of a cycle now where we've got a lot of great stuff coming out. Yeah. And when we spoke a year ago, I talked about um, the things that I thought that we were doing that were super interesting in the next couple of years. And a bunch of that stuff's coming out, you know, between, between Yukon, um, uh, next version of Visual Studio. Um, uh, uh, what we've got, what I think we've, we're doing in Windows Server with R2 is super interesting. Um, uh, uh, in the I, next year, with the I next like Avalon, oh. uh, Windows Presentation Foundation. Yeah, yeah I can never. I haven't got those names in my head. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you know, in the next year, where we yeah. go and get uh, uh, Vista out, and then we get um, Avalon, the Presentation Foundation. I actually think um, uh, the other thing that's the uh, Real surpriser and is going to be the real sneak up on people is uh, is Indigo, yeah. um, and because uh, I really believe that we've got to go through a generational shift around the way that applications speak to each other, and you got to get to this more reliable and simpler point to be able to get in there. But with all this stuff coming down the line and Longhorn Server, don't, don't, don't let me not say Longhorn Server. IS no, is it still Rocks, Longhorn maybe? Server or is it Windows Vista Server? It's uh, Longhorn Server. We, I'm asking a loaded question there. Uh, uh, we have not decided naming, but I, okay. all I can say is that we're in the server business and we're not very good at um, 
uh, being all that inventive about naming. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and Vista, while it's a, a, a good name for what the client wants to do, it's a consumer thing. Serve a business, you don't want to go on. You, you want people to be thinking, oh, I've got a server and I'm serious. Yeah. Um, so naming, name, and, and trust me, the things that I don't understand at Microsoft, licensing, I have no idea. I've never been able to understand that. And naming is, I worked on the first version of Exchange Server and it was version 4. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just weirdness. I'm sure that everybody thinks that we're weird around that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, everybody even internally thinks. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, the, the cool thing is that we, you know, yeah. we, we go through this, we, we've gone through, I, I think, a bit of a downtime. And I think that we're going up into a, a time where we're going back on the offensive about what we're doing, what we're releasing. We've got a lot of great products coming out. And, and when you go and look at the ways you can put this stuff together and the interactions between you know some of the stuff that they're building in office and some of the applications that are sitting out there and and what developers are able to do with the platform and, and you know the simplicity in, in, in making things that we've got personally I think that that um, you know a years a year from now we'll be looking back and having and having this uh, uh, very upbeat perspective on Microsoft I, I really think that um, that that's just the phase that happens, and, and we've yep. gone through these phases before. I, I, we went through sort of a phase like this in, in 2000, around when we did Windows 2000. Actually, it sort of lasted through to when we did XP, um, uh, and then we went through. Uh, uh, you know, we'd gone through an earlier phase of that and Windows uh, when we did Windows 95, and around that time. So, always Microsoft goes through cycles, and uh, I think we're just on an uptick right now. I, I agree. I'm more excited about Microsoft right now than I have been in a long time. But uh, there's um, a very famous man walking by named Joe oh, Long. No, he is no, very no. famous and very important. Very what does he do? It's not very important at all. Not like this guy here. <laughs> Joe Watch Long does all the key parts of Windows. Did you ask him about his big black boot? <laughs> with the spike. Get the one with the spike. <laughs> the spike. <laughs> See, Joe's a very important man, and you should know that. What, what does he do? Um, he runs a bunch of. Uh, uh, Things like uh, MSMQ and Complus and ah. DTC and that's the development of those those pieces. Um, so he's in in what what is our connected systems division or our new con connected systems division, and uh, he's a key contributor to doing a bunch of that sort of underneath the covers yep. stuff. Yeah, infrastructure. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It really important stuff. I was just down in Silicon Valley with a bunch of twenty-year-olds at a bar camp. You know, mm. a little geek camp down there. Yeah. And I noticed that they're you, that they're innovating on the web mostly, uh -huh. which means servers, right? Yep. And it's not on our server. <laughs> so, yep. so how how do we win back those guys? What what's cool about R two that's going to get their attention? Well, actually, I, I think that that R two is is not exactly that play. I think that that. Um, you know, Visual Studio and SQL, uh, you know, and the sorts of things you're able to do around that, and, and what's our Ajax toolkit doing? Yeah, yeah. Atlas. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, um, sorry, I didn't know the name of it. <laughs> uh, 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 you know, do, doing things like that are going to win win those sort of people because when people see how easy it is to go and do these things, R2 is more a play around um, around saying, you know, uh, Windows Server is really should be when it comes out of the box should be nothing okay and then you go and put a role on it you go and put you know you say it's a file server or you say it's an active directory server or something like that a couple of years ago when i moved over to server we started looking into how we did how we could do interim updates because we knew longhorn server was a long way out and uh, so we said yeah we started with a couple of things that were sort of the premise of it one was how can it be incredibly non-disruptive and that's a weird uh, uh, weird double negative sort of thing I just said there, but uh, how can we say, how can we have this stuff come out and not people and not have people go back and go, oh God, I got to go and look at you know my implementation of Windows Server 2003 when this thing comes out. So we've said what we're doing is we're we're adding new stuff or adding stuff to the side of uh, uh, existing roles. Okay. And the cool thing there is that it also says that we can go and do one servicing tree afterwards. So you know. 
um, straight Windows Server 2003 can be uh, uh, can be serviced by the same service pack that will uh, uh, service ones that you know get R2 out there. And so for corporates and for people who've got to manage a whole bunch of servers and a whole bunch of different things, they don't have to go. This is an R2 box. I've got to service this differently than this this you know straight Windows Server 2003 thing. And you know because the server business, we we learn a lot with Windows 2000, which was an incredibly disruptive release because you know. Active Directory, go and pull your hair out and learn all this sort of stuff. Yeah. We should be going and just doing incremental stuff in the server business. We should be going back and focusing on not disrupting, not going and uh, affecting people's current installation. But hell, if we can give them good stuff in the middle there, if they go and do a deployment of Longhorn Server and you know, a year and a half, two years after we go and release Longhorn Server, a bunch of new functionality comes through. You know, after they've gone and done their deployment and all that sort of stuff, they start getting some stuff for free that they can roll out on top of it. So we really think that the model is really nice around this. And the first release of R2 was all about doing the model the right way. Um, uh, so that's you know that, that was the key for, for me on that. Um, uh, there's a couple of great things that we're doing in this. Sorry, you, oh, uh, you mentioned that uh, that uh, R2 starts with nothing. Isn't that a complete change from Windows 2000 server? Uh, yeah, it's a complete Windows change. Windows 2000 server used to come with a web browser and come with... I Windows think Server 2003 should come with nothing installed by default. Windows 2000, we learnt a lot of lessons about, you know, like the like classic one is. Um, uh, we turn this thing on. Internet printing. Okay, now, I ask you, how many of you have actually ever used that? Um, uh, in uh, I'd love to have a chat thing that goes after that to find someone who actually has used internet printing because uh, uh, we uh, we released Windows 2000 August that year we had a security vulnerability affected every freaking system that was out there um, and um, uh, yeah in the time since then I've asked nearly every customer I've met with you know do you use internet printing and I found one customer over that time that was Arthur Anderson and they've got <laughs> uh, there's no real customers out there for this thing. Um, but, you know, really Windows 2000 showed up this sort of 1999 mentality. Oh, it's the internet. You've got to, you know, drink the Kool-Aid and get everything going for the internet uh, uh, developer. And it was wrong. You know, nobody used a bunch of these features. We should have had them turned off and told the developer to turn them on when they needed them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we learned things. It was, it was silly mistakes that we learned from. So when you start up a R2 server, what are you going to see? Are you going to see a console? <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're going to say that what you're going to see is if you're installing it on that box, or if you uh, uh, the first thing you're going to see is the the thing that goes and says what roles do you want to put on it, what what you know uh, uh, functionality you want to put on it, and then you'll also be given you know there's a wizard that will come up and uh, um, uh, you know show you what ports you want to have open and all that sort of stuff. Just the same as what we did with Windows Server 2003 SP1. It's the same sort of idea. It should be conceptually going along the same way. Yeah. The server is changing too because, you know, I'm thinking back to 95. You know, my business used to have one server. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, for the web. And now, and now uh, I know some kids with 50. 500, I mean, uh, my friends who run Hot or Not have yeah. 500 servers in their data farm, yeah. you know, or hundreds, I'm well, not sure what the exact um, number is. Uh, you know, like hell, uh, um, I I'm actually get, I get to leave early today because I'm going home to get my new server for home, so I'm, uh, I'm like, yeah. Um, and I, I'm running two servers in my house, you know. Yeah. Um, Bob, my boss, runs 11 servers in his house, but he's a freak. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, we, you, uh, obviously, the conference services don't like you because they're coming to run over your uh, filming thing. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, one of the things that gets very difficult in our biz and, and the server biz is understanding the breadth of what's in the server. Um, and you can you can yeah, get into this. Um, you can get into this uh, 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 difficult situation where to find the sticky center of or the hard center of Windows Server is very hard. It's sort of it's, it can be quite amorphous how broad it is. And um, so we've gone down this thing of going and saying that we want to we want to have some sort of categories of different roles. You know, the, the stuff that you're going to run your infrastructure on, the stuff that's going to support um, uh, uh, knowledge workers. You know, email, file, print. Uh, the stuff that. Uh, um, 
you're going to have to run an application server, stuff you're going to run to manage it, and uh, and really go and say that, that these are categories and and how do these work together? Because you know you're going to you're going to go and do that for that thing of um, you know a hot or not or, or some site that's got you know hundreds of servers. Yeah, Generally, you're looking stuff, at the right? tiers because what they're going to do is they're going to have some sort of front end. Them, you know, they may have some middle middle sort of broker layer, and then on the back end they're going to have a big old fatty database. Um, and having a look at the, the methodology that people put into that is, you know, that that's radically changed since you know uh, a lot of businesses are web focused. That's an obvious sort of change to go along. You know? Yeah. So how does R2 make it easier to run a data center? Um, so R2 has got three major focuses. Okay. Um, uh, there's a couple other things we put in there. Um, it's not really a data center focus, you know, like running a data center or a uh, focus sort of thing. There are some things in there that go and do it. We, we've yeah. got great support for running branches. And in the past, we didn't do a very, I think, a very good job of running branches, you know, uh, where something's over a remote link, low bandwidth out to out there, um, you know, we could end up being very chatty. And we've removed a lot of ways of going and having the system be really chatty over that link, like... Um, uh, you know, a lot of people have requirements now where they've got to go and uh, um, move files in from a remote location into a central location every night, you know, do backups to you know, deal with whatever level of uh, uh, compliance or whatever crap that they're going to deal with these days. Um, uh, in the past, if I change one word in a, in a big word file, I'm going to shove the whole word file across, you know, three meg, whatever. Um, now we've got uh, remote differential compression, so what's going to happen is just that just the word and the pointers around it are going to be shoved across. And we've seen for for people who are doing this sort of deal, um, we've definitely seen that their replication traffic has cut down significantly, you know, eighty five percent stuff like that. So one is really going and focusing on that branch thing. There's also some other things we're putting in there, some management pieces, so you don't have to go and send someone out to a remote location, you know. Some stuff we can go and touch the hardware out of the OS, some things that, um, you know, do better management of printing and having a look at the ways that uh, you shove stuff across the wire. Um, uh, the second one is uh, really doing web single sign-on. This is ADFS. I don't know how much you've spoken to people about nope, ADFS. Not much. Active Directory Federation Services. That's my phone making noises. <laughs> um, uh, which is really a way, a, a way that you can enable... Um, a, uh, a, a site or another organisation to be able to federate with your with your organisation, and basically, you know, you get this sort of token exchange. But you know, for us, we're able to go and um, uh, set up different sites where, in the past, we would have had to have logged on to a specific ID out there. We could just go and use our Microsoft ID to go and uh, march straight through to it. And I'd love for Channel Nine or MSDN to go and do that because. I can never remember my MSDN ID, and I've always got to go and ask for a new password and my Channel 9 ID. Yeah. I've got to go and ask for a new password all the time. So I want you guys to use ADFS, because then we can just have tie, tie our identities back to our Microsoft thing, and I never have to sign on again. It'll be cool. I'll, I'll talk to Charles about that. Yeah. It'll be cool. It'll be cool. You'll be a showcase for us. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the third area is going and simplify. the third area of R2 is going and simplifying a bunch of stuff around storage. Um, creating a SAN today is a freaking nightmare. Uh, anybody creating who's got, a SAN? Creating nice. a SAN. Anybody who's created a SAN knows it's a nightmare. Um, uh, we simplify doing that. We've got some things in there because we have, we simplify that if, you know, it's a Windows box or it's a Windows storage server. We've got a set of APIs in there that uh, we're essentially for backup, but we're able to use them for creating a SAN and creating sort of the small size or small end of, of SANs, you know, three through 15 terabytes sort of SANs. Um, uh, we do some other things like, you know, we've got real NFS support in there in the box for the first time. Um, yeah. uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we've got quotas built into the system and real quotas so you can go and look at the thing and go, you know, I don't want MP3s or JPEGs on this file server, lock those sort of things out and here's the limit that people have got, things like that. So, right. Um, so really, it, it is kind of mostly focused on, on, on corporates. Yeah. Um, and it's focused on giving them new sort of uh, extra functionality over Windows Server 2003. Right. Part of it's also proving that we can actually do an update without having to go and make you throw everything out beforehand. Yeah. Um, and we also get into this thing of being kind of regular, you know. Um, uh, Windows Server 2003 got released in 2003. 
2003. Yep. Um, R2 goes out in 2005, Longhorn Server goes out in 2007. Hmm. Where every two years, and I don't expect anybody's going to believe us until, I, you know, yeah. until we get the third one. Um, but um, you know, we get this really regular sort of thing going. It's great. Yeah, that's that's one of our big big aims. Um, what other things do people care about servers? Manageability, you touched on a little bit. What well, makes it? Yeah, uh, you know, like so. I mean, we're seeing still people who aren't loading patches and you know keeping their systems up to date. And so manageability. Manageability is one of these things on multiple levels where you where you get problems. I believe everything becomes a management problem after a while. And even if you go and have a look at you know virtualization, um, uh, the real things that happen around virtualization is is how do you do the manageability of that? How do you you, you know, uh, handle different ways? And, and we've talked. Bob, Bob did an announcement at uh, um, somewhere. I think it was TechEd about what we were doing about. Um, uh, about virtualization, where our story is. So what, what is virtualization, and why why do we care about that? Well, well, that's a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> I know you know the answer. <laughs> uh, um, uh, we care about it because it, it solves a sort of fundamental management problem for a lot of organisations, um, uh, which is the ability to be able to to not tie a process to an actual box. So removing the state of uh, the, the fact that you know the state may be tied to a machine because of the way applications are, but you don't actually have to tie it down onto a piece of hardware. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so you know that that's the real thing that, that goes and does it, and you know allows you to be able to go and get into situations where um, uh, you can maintain a box and not have to come in at two in the morning to go and do it. You can do it four in the afternoon because. You, know, you can move stuff around in your system, um, so you know. And that's that. This is not new new ideas. I worked on mainframes in the eighties, which just shows I'm old and some gray hair. <laughs> uh, um, and and we were doing stuff like that back then. You know, it's not it's not new. It's just taken a long while for you know PC systems to actually catch up on that. Yeah. You know. What's uh. What what's the coolest thing in R two? What you know, if you had an MVP walk into this interview, what, what would you say? Uh, what you what would I show out? them, yeah. or what would I tell them? Uh, what would I talk about? That's the coolest thing. Uh, frankly, I I actually think that ADFS is pretty uh, pretty cool because I think that that when you start talking about identity and being able to go and um, uh, keep your identity and you're moving between places, you can see, very quickly see that. Um, uh, uh, you know, identity is the center of, of a lot of uh, solutions to things. Um, you know, cool, snazzy things. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I generally sort of don't go and point out the UI sort of stuff, but I, I kind of like some of the stuff that we've done around management consoles to be able to go and uh, uh, solve a bunch of problems that people deal with every day. You know, that's a service. We're not going to do flash. You know, it's not going to do yeah. much, you know. It's Avalon's not going to be loaded on um, the by default. We will have a way that Avalon can be loaded on server. We, we, you know, like that'll be, that'll be, you know, because you, you will have some server-based Avalon apps, and a yep. lot of that is remoting the Avalon stuff, so the stack needs to be there. But, you know, yeah, it's not going to be the administrator's UI is going to be uh, Avalon enabled. And yeah. like, you know, <laughs> hit me over the head with a brick if we ever do that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, you know, like a, you want function. The thing that the thing that I think that we know is that we want to get to this place with server where, if you're an admin, you can go to any part of the system and basically know your way around. Today, I think there are parts of it that are really sort of cruel between different parts because you start, you know, uh, you start getting caught into the bowels of, you know, if you go and have a look at a DHCP server, you start getting caught in the bowels of DHCP. That it's probably stuff that you're not going to know what the hell this means. We, we would like to get to a point where we know that there's sort of a standardized way and then just go and command line enable to hell all the stuff below that and just be able to go and say that there, there's models that you can get in. Um, hopefully, eventually, it'll be, uh, um, uh, you know, Monad enabled everything. You know? uh, yeah. Um, if a CTO from a Fortune 500 company was here right now... I'll just tell you now, there's the famous Eric Daly. Uh, famous on Channel 9, Eric. There he is. <laughs> famous man walking by. <laughs> We're sitting between the buildings, uh, our buildings, and uh, 
where the coffee is. So oh, that's yeah. why <laughs> coffee stand espresso need, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Starbucks powers Microsoft. That's right, that's right. Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, it's for it's for CTOs. So, anyways, guys, I'd be talking about bandwidth reduction and and. Well, what, what if they before. came in here and said, "I'm thinking of going with a competitor's, you know, server"? What what would well, you say? We'd be to them? talking about you'd be talking about the specific roles, you know, yeah. like, um, I'm a li I'm probably a little bit uh, of a. Um, People maybe wouldn't really like me saying this sort of thing, but I, you know, that there are sometimes we're not going to do every role perfectly for every customer. And the more important thing for, for Microsoft to go and do is to be able to go and say, yeah, we can do some, uh, we do a level of interoperability. You know, there are going to be cases where some people are going to choose QIP for uh, a running part of their infrastructure. Um, we should find out why, why we're short for that customer and why, what we're not doing right and how we go and do, do it right in the next version. Um, there are going to be some cases where um, you know people are going to choose something because they they, they want to have you know uh, um, a sort of more heterogeneous environment. You know, and 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 we don't make the the customers the person who's got to make the decision for themselves. Hopefully, we're going to make it easiest, cheapest, uh, uh, easiest to run cheapest staffing, all that sort of stuff. And um, we think that we can do that. You know. Um, you know, I, I personally don't believe that we're competing with, you know, I don't think we're competing with the free world and the Linux discussion. We're competing with other companies that make things for profits, you know. Yeah. Red Hat is a for-profit company. Um, and for them to come out and play the um, play the free world card is a little bit, you know, disingenuous, really. Um, uh, so that's, that's, that's my thing. So I, I'll have a discussion about the functionality and we'll have a discussion about... Um, other things that are further down the line, you know, people always go and have this discussion about what the upfront cost is. No real CTO, no CTO, CIO that would be able to keep a job for longer than three weeks could do anything but have a look at what the long term costs are. You've got to go and have a look what the costs are through the whole life cycle. The software cost is pretty low compared to the overall management costs, the overall uh, um, servicing costs. You know, and if you go and look through four years and you have a look at, you know, what it's going to cost you to service various disties, it's going to, there are some things that are going to cost a lot more money, so, you know, we'll have a discussion about actual things, yep. you know, if it was simple, I don't know, uh, I'd be more important, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, one of my, one of my uh, interview questions was, uh, when I came to Microsoft was, um, how would you get XYZ customer to switch from? XYZ operating system to Windows Server. Uh, uh, <laughs> and what was your answer? Buy them. <laughs> I, you know, um, <coughs> we've done some interesting things lately. You know, like uh, um, yeah. uh, Virtual Server, we've gone and announced that, you know, Linux or various versions of Linux and uh, Unix will run in Virtual Server. And it's, I think it's a really different, um, uh, uh, a really different sort of discussion for Microsoft to go and have. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it's an incredibly different discussion for Microsoft to have than, than, than what we used to have, which is, you know, like they, they don't exist, all that sort of stuff. And going and saying that, that level, the level of interoperability we can go and do and, and going and looking further down the line where we have, you know, WS standards, you know, WS star stuff. Or we go and have a look at what we're doing around identity and uh, you know interoperability with things like Liberty and stuff like that is a really different sort of case than we had before. I think that most of the time uh, in the past you'd have discussions about interoperability and you'd really be having a discussion about um, you know, you'd, you'd be you'd be talking lowest common denominator. Now it's real, sort of real stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When does R two come out? R two uh, we hope is. Uh, I meant to say early next year. Um, okay. we, we hope it's a little earlier than that. Okay. You know, we yeah. When it's done. <laughs> when it's done. When it's right. Come yeah. on. You know, like I got in trouble years ago. Can I say a bad word on your side? It's oh sure. Um, <laughs> we'll have to put a PG rating. On yeah, there. or maybe you can put a beep in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, not long after I took over Windows 2000, there was a bunch of Aussie press here. 
you know, they, they, they got around, they were going around campus and then they got to see, you know, Aussie boy doing this job, blah, blah. Um, and I spoke to, to a bunch of them and, and in the end of it, someone goes, you know, Windows 2000 is dramatically late, you know, what, what are you going to do? And I've said, you know, really after, you know, six months after your release, no one's going to remember if you're a couple of months late versus if it's a piece of shit. That was the bad word. <laughs> so, me, that was the way I, that's the way I speak, you know. Um, um, yep. and, uh, um, well, that's why I liked you. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, oh, well, you know, didn't think anything more of it. And I get a phone call from the, a uh, uh, piece of mail from the, uh, 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 the person who brought him over, you know, there's going to be this story, you know, they're going to put a picture of you in the Sydney Morning Herald with, you know, it's where my parents live. So I ring up my mum and I'm like, uh, um, yeah, there's going to be this article in the Sydney Morning Herald. And she's like, great, you know, the card girls are coming over tomorrow. I'll go and get five copies of the paper. So she goes down the road, get this phone call that, you know, in the afternoon here, it's just silence, deathly silence on the end of the, end of the phone. And uh, she said, all she could say is, I can't believe you swore in the Sydney Morning Herald. <laughs> so it just shows you, it doesn't matter where you move in the world, you can never get away from your mum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Australian papers print more words than we than that's American right. that's, words do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I was surprised that he didn't uh, uh, he didn't go and change because someone else printed the same quote and changed the word. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know, I don't yeah. know what happens. Um. So, what's your job like now? What What are you doing every day? Um, I spent. I was pretty. I got pretty involved there for a while with getting Beta One out um, okay. because you know uh, those probably not as many people around who sort of gone through it as much as we were previously, as much as we would have liked. Um, so that was sort of up till July, I was spending a fair amount of time doing that. Um, at the moment, most of my time is, is Longhorn focused. I've got a great guy on R2 who's uh, doing an awesome job. Who's that? Um, his name's Eric Kidd. Um, and Mark Harris as well, who's, uh, uh, who's a guy that was involved in XPSP2 and uh, uh, I've known for a long while. Uh, um, so both those guys are basically, you know, for me, actually my amount of time on the project is really cut back. Um, and so I'm spending most of my time looking at Longhorn Server and what we're doing there. And uh, um, Are you running the war room? Or No, no, I'm not yeah. running the war room. That's, that's someone else's job. That's, that's my old life. That's yep. something, you, know, you don't uh, want to do that again? <laughs> no, I, I, but I was going along and I was working with Sven, who's the guy who runs it now. Um, okay. <laughs> I've also got a, got a great guy who works for me. Uh, 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 Alex Henricks, who is the uh, project manager for uh, Mogwon Server, right? Um, and uh, he runs a bunch of stuff over here. So, yeah, I got, how, I got, how do your two jobs compare? The war room job versus what you're doing today? Um, that was all about delivery. The war room job, that uh, you know, running that sort of central project management thing, owning that sort of last year, two years worth of delivery of a project. This is more about definition and stuff like that. Um, I've got this other. I've got other things too. Like uh, um, I've got to do. Uh, um, sorry, my phone went yeah. um, uh, Terminal server reports for me. So I spend time working with those guys, and, and and a lot of the time actually, it's it's more important to go and spend time working with the people about their careers than uh, than sitting there and and, and and fighting about a feature. Yeah. Um, and so it's so probably most. And I got a great. There's a great palm that works for them. So you know, product unit manager. Yep. Um, uh, but you know, probably uh, you know, reality is most of my time I go to meetings and we sit there and we talk about stuff and we make decisions and hopefully we go and work out that they're done the right way and uh, uh, we help people move forward and, and if they need to get some something unblocked, we go and unblock them in whatever way. Um, uh, so you know, it's a little bit of is is uh, um, uh, being just the manager sort of dude um, and. Uh, you know, hopefully it's uh, uh, putting energy and getting direction and all that sort of stuff and helping people be able to sort of see see ways of coming together and being able to solve problems that they're, they're hitting. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, who's the guy who used to run General Electric? Um, he uh, Jack book. Welch. Jack Welch, yeah. He talked about um, what makes a great leader, right? Mm -hmm. One of his first rules was, I want candor. I want. Mm -hmm. and I, when I think of candor, I think you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> But what, what makes what do you look for? We, we had, I think we had this discussion before. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that you, when you go and have these sort of discussions about what's good about leadership, I, I, I personally believe brutal honesty is is the one. I think I said that to you before. Yeah. Um, I think on a personal level, um, doing what you say, 
you know, yeah. which comes back to honesty, but also turning up on time. You know, like I, I got to say that the, there is nothing more depressing for a group of people than every time they're meeting with someone in charge, the person is 15 minutes late. And it, frankly, it's it's freaking disrespectful. And uh, um, so I'm just like, I, I manage my time ridiculously now. You know, I'm like at the end of the month to sit down and look through where I've spent my time and, and pull levers depending, you know, don't go to some things if it's uh, and it's not there. The other thing is that the, the thing that actually comes out of that is that you get to your life gets a lot more controlled out of that. You know, yeah. you, you eventually are able to go and say, well, I'm not I'm not spending 80 hours a week at work anymore. I'm spending, you know, 50 or 60, and that's that. You know, you start getting to that, your life improves. You know, <laughs> yeah. Of course, uh, the the other side of that is I don't get much control when I go sort of upwards. So you know, you, sometimes you. You know, when you got to go and see people up, or you got to do reviews up, you spend time doing different things. Or you know, yeah. um, when you're traveling, you don't get as much time to do stuff. But you know, that's just that's part and parcel of the thing. I think that you know, in the situations where I uh, I can control, I think that um, you know, managing time is 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 the most important. One. And 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 that comes down to respect and and having respect for people and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You know. Um, because I, I believe, I really believe that if you go and combine those two things, where you're actually, you know, you're not only saying you respect them and, and stuff, you're actually living that sort of stuff up. People will do a lot for you. Yeah. You know, people will work hard. Um, uh, that, you know, I don't know. They're, they're, I'm sure there's other ways of doing things, but they're the things that they're the things I got to do. So. It's the little things. Yeah. Showing it's, up, showing up is ninety percent of life. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, yeah. we used to have that with uh, with with Windows two thousand, which was Windows two thousand. Frankly, was the worst run project of all time. I got to say that we were we brought people in. I think we did in nineteen ninety nine. We had thirty seven day weeks, something like that, some somewhere around there, maybe thirty two, thirty three, um, which is just the stupidest way to run a project ever. And then in uh, XP, we said we're not going to work Sundays because really we got nothing on Sundays and it was no real use except for killing people's lives. Yeah. And I found we were far more productive in going and doing that. Um, you know, people could come in as individuals and do stuff on Sundays, but we didn't have any sort of infrastructure running. Um, you know, going and going and making changes like that and and saying you know having a little bit of downtime. You know, you're going to have a crunch period. You're going to do do the big hours sometimes, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But um, being able to say that you know, as a regular thing, here are the things you can count on and you expect, makes a lot more sense if you want to build a business that keeps and stays around for a long while, keep a bunch of people around for a long while too. Yeah, at least to me. Cool. Yeah. Anything else we should know about server or R two or? No, but R two rocks, baby. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, you know, I, I I really think that that if we're you know at the end of that that sort of discussion about R two, I really think that 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 going and having this sort of non disruptive thing is going to prove out to be the right decision for us to go and do. And you know, um, we'll see over time whether people believe us and whether we actually go and do live up to our promises. We will live up to our promises, but um, you know, going and doing that, I think that's the most important thing that we can go and do for this biz. Yeah. You know. There'll be things that'll come along and disrupt it, but you know, then we can react to them. So. Well, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks. it's always good.